Hello everyone, welcome to Crafty Garden. My name is Stephanie and I just thought I would do like a little after school um, shorty. <laughs> a little after school short video. Um, probably shouldn't say shorty. Uh, okay, I just got home. It is it's after seven. Uh, Tuesday, I've been home long enough to like put all my crap down and um, open up a package that I got in the mail and I was like, I've been expecting something. I've been expecting a few things, but I've been expecting something kind of big and, and I haven't gotten word. I haven't checked my email since I got home, but I haven't got word on when I'll get that actually shipped out. Um, and I cannot wait to tell you about that, but I'm kind of like keeping that under wraps. Uh, by the way, hello if you're new. This is going to be really different than my normal episodes. I just got home from um, school. Uh, I worked all day today. I stayed really late. And as soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to <laughs> do some homework. So um, I have to do my kids' homework, my students' homework. And I have to do some more planning for this week because uh, new school, new year, craziness. But I got something in the mail and I'm super duper excited. Um, I was so excited that I was like floored and just overwhelmed with um, gratitude. So this person did not have to do this, but was very sweet. I thought they might send me a little bitty sample. I'm blown away. So first up, I want to say a huge thank you to Erica from Sweden. Um, she... Uh, took part in the uh, fiber prep summer camp and um, she talked about um, processing this uh, new Swedish wool that's kind of being developed and I'm going to probably say it really wrong. She kind of gave me a little advice on how to say it. Jamped land or jumped? <laughs> I'm so bad. I have to like double check and look it up. I, I remember she's like the first part is just like jam. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, Erica, and it's Jam, Jam Land. It's like J-A-M-T-L-A-N-D. I'm looking at an old email where we had kind of chatted back and forth. Um, so she sent me that, but I opened this package and I got four bags like this. And the first one I saw written on um, the outside or the bottom, it said alpaca, black alpaca. And I was like, what? Alpaca? <laughs> she didn't tell me she was going to send me this. Sorry about the noise. But this is, look, you can't, you're not going to be able to pick up the detail. And it's like, it's getting dark. So I have to hurry up. But, oh my God, I've never had raw alpaca. I'm going to sniff this on camera. Did she wash this for me? She It smells clean. Maybe she washed it. I've never processed alpaca from um, fleece. Do you call it blanket or do you also call it fleece? I don't really know. I've never bought an alpaca fleece. The ones at Rhinebeck are super duper expensive. Um, but anyways, this is so soft. Um, thank you, Erica. Thank you so much. Um, I, this is, this is so bad for me right now because all I want to do is play with this wool. <sighs> and it's the last thing I need to be doing right now. I need to be like, well, I don't know. I've got to find balance. Like that is my goal. I'm so rambly and I'm just like, I'm so excited. I went from being so tired and now I'm like so excited. <laughs> Um, my goal this year, my, the school year, is to find balance because last year I didn't have balance and it really like threw me out of whack. Um, I wasn't my happiest, healthiest self and I'm trying to get back to that and get back to being a little bit um, happier and healthier and it's not like I wasn't happy, it's just that I wasn't taking care of myself, in particular my body and I wasn't eating like I should be. And, um, yeah, so that's my goal this year is just take like a little more care of myself. So although I have a lot of things I could be doing tonight, it's already kind of late. So maybe I should do some self care anyways. So let me show you the rest that she got. 
she sent me. So these three are that jam, jam plan, jam plan, jam plan. I'm sorry. I do, but I'm trying. Um, let's see. So this is, must be adult in here. This is adult. And which one's the lamb? One of these is lamb. Okay, this one's the lamb. So here's the other adult. And these three might be from different um, sheep. So they might be from different fleeces. Um, I'm not exactly sure about these two. If they're from the same or from different sheep. And then this one is lamb. So this is probably... The locks are so pretty. The locks on this little section are probably the prettiest. I forget what she said it's made up of. Does she say in here? Mm, I don't remember at the moment. She did, She put it in our, um, I'm looking at my phone on Ravelry. She put it in our, um, uh, the fiber prep summer camp that I co-hosted with Lisa. And I'm looking at my phone again. Hope you guys don't mind. Fiber Prep Summer Camp. Um, so she talked about the different breeds. I feel like there's a Swedish breed in here. And maybe there's Merino. And maybe something else. I really want to look it up. I feel bad that I'm like stopping to do this. but Okay, I think I'm going to give up on this and just keep moving because I'm wasting time at this point. But um, if you're interested in looking at that, um, it's locked, I think, but the Fiber Prep Summer Camp um, thread in my Ravelry group, which is Crafty Garden Podcast, and my uh, username is Crafty Garden Sews on Ravelry and Instagram, although my Instagram is private and I'm a bit picky because I'm a teacher about who I accept. Um, anyways, so I just scrolled across something that I think I never talked about. This is Farmer Dave. <laughs> and if you're interested, this was such a funny, cute little story. And we all had a good chuckle about Dave. So if you um, haven't, like, if you're into spinning and wool and fleeces and stuff, and you didn't take part, you should, um, like, look through that thread. Because we had a lot of fun. And I'm, like, missing it already. Oh, this smells so nice. Um, oh my goodness. It's so soft. And the crimp on that is so beautiful, you guys. This is so nice. Okay, I'm done gushing. Thank you, Erica. This is wonderful. I am going to have a hard time keeping my hands out of this bag. And the black alpaca. All right, so I thought I'd update you guys on some other stuff that's going on. So let's do oldest to newest, maybe. All right, so my um, co my Shetland Colorwork project, ha I think, I don't remember what this looked like the last time I showed you guys. My brain is like teacher brain right now, and it's completely fried. But um, I finished this big flower flower-ish, star-ish pattern that I really, really love and um, designed. And then I decided to, oh, don't get my ring, it's my grandma's ring. Um, I didn't know if I was going to talk about it, but um, my grandpa, my grandfather, my grandpa, he also passed away recently, so um, I got really emotional a while back. Um, when I was talking about my grandmother's passing and my grandfather has been kind of in bad shape for a while and, um, he passed, um, over the summer and I wasn't sure if I wanted to talk about it or not, but, um, I think, um, I felt like it was a good thing. I felt like it was his time and I felt like, um, it was, I felt like he was going to be with my grandmother again, and I'll stop there before I start crying. So I'm happy with it, and I'm good, and I'm glad that they're together again. So look at me. I'm not crying. Um, 
So, uh, back to my Shetland Colorwork project. So, um, I decided to invert the colors. So you can see like the background for this one, I think you can see, is kind of a chocolatey brown. And then the background for this one is the kind of inverse, so it's the lighter colors. So for like this infinity, my infinitely linked infinity symbols, um, it's gray with white, and this one's white with gray. So I just decided it would be fun to kind of invert them. And I think it keeps me like interested and engaged in the pattern because I'm like having to constantly like be creative versus just repeat what I've already done. So um, I think I'm going to do, so this is kind of like the original and then I'm going to do like the inverted and then when that's done, I think I'll do the original again. And um, it will without a doubt be the most unique <laughs> cardigan ever. Hand spun all 100% Shetland um, natural colors that I spun from five different fleeces. And feel free to check out my fleece to FO series and past videos for more information. If you're new, if you're new, you're like, who is this crazy lady? Um, <laughs> so I am at the point where I've got to figure out what to do about splitting. And I'm not that confident with the bottom up construction. So um, I want to do like a traditional Gansey, Guernsey, Gansey um, construction. And um, the book that I'm using has gussets, and then you put the gussets on hold, and then I think you have to knit flat, which is a little intimidating. The whole gusset thing is intimidating, and I realized that I really should have figured out some more, I should have done a lot more calculations about like different measurements. I thought I had a good general idea of like the length that I needed to do, and I have a good general idea of like the arm length that I need to do, but the gussets kind of throw a wrench into things, and so I'm going to have to like find some time to sit down and do some crunching on like my measurements and figuring out how to make this thing fit me um, the best and look good and not like it came out of the 80s. Because the book that I'm using is a little dated. So I want to be careful too and like cross-reference other sources. I think I'm going to look at my... I have another book on Gansey's too, but it's also kind of an old book. Anyways, I don't want like bat wings, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the like those 80s giant sleeves that is not a cute look for me so that's where I'm at with my Shetland color work project and um I don't I'm I'm afraid that because I'm at this like crossroads that this is gonna get like put aside for a long time but I really am gonna try not to do that because I know that that's gonna be like my all-time favorite thing I've ever made ever if I finish it so um, okay, so let's talk about my basket. <laughs> so at the beginning of the summer, I traveled down to North Carolina, and I kind of just referenced that video where I talked about, like, the trip and stuff that I got. Um, and, and one of the things that I was really, really wanting to do was um, learn how to make baskets. And I bought a kit plus some materials to make another basket. And this, I think it looks pretty decent on camera. <laughs> um, this thing kind of fought me. It's not even 100% done. Um, but this, this basket fought me. <laughs> um, or I got in my own way is the truth of it. But um, it's a shaker head, cat, cat head basket, something like that. The, the kit was around 20 ish dollars, I think. And you can check out that old video if you want to. Um, is that in June? I don't remember what number. Oh, I have my notes right here. Oh. Let's see. How to calculate grist. Uh, it was number 55 for, uh, for when I got the this basket making kit. Um, so I have to do the rim and you kind of do like one on the outside and one on the inside and then you do this 
lashing wrap thing. I haven't gotten around to doing that yet. That's the bottom. Um, I think this was actually probably an intermediate to advanced beginner slash intermediate project, at least without any help. <laughs> um, the shaping of the bottom, you kind of push in and it creates this shape. And my, <laughs> one of the sides is like really bowed and one of the sides is a little bit flatter and no, no, none of them are quite the same. You can see how it's not really centered right there. Um, I put the handles in there so that there was kind of a back so that there's more space on this side. And I had more handle material than I needed. These could have been, this could have been a lot longer. Um, I decided to cut it down though. I'm not sure how good of a job I really did on these, but I mean, it seems to be holding. I can fit it over my shoulder. I could use it for like gathering stuff or I could bring it to my classroom if I want to risk that <laughs> and use it for like, I don't know, some kind of cute cutesy thing. I have no idea. I should probably just keep it at home, but um, yeah, I'm proud of myself for sticking with it because there was a couple times where I was ready to throw this thing in the fire. I would have never done that, but there were, uh, there's a point where I ripped back. There was a point where I said various colorful words. <laughs> So I'm almost done. I think the last part is going to also be a pain in the butt and that's kind of why I'm avoiding it. So, so that's that. Um, and so really recently, um, yeah, I'll save that other thing for last. Okay. So really recently I, oh, uh, I have yarn downstairs. I could share. Uh, I'm not going to bother. Okay. So I, told you guys a while back that I signed up for the Shave em to Save em conservation um, initiative for sheep breeds that are rare, endangered, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's all started with my Jacob fleece that I bought at New, Ham New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival, which was and still is an amazing fleece. Um, but I've gotten distracted and sidetracked because I have a problem. I have a fleece problem. Um, so I was hunting around on Etsy for some um, other fleece or wool from the other breeds that I need to complete and I ended up purchasing some even though I have <laughs> I already have some um, well, I, I purchased from two different farms. I purchased some Gulf Coast Native, which I'm not going to show. Uh, I think it's in that room. I put it away. I washed it and dried it, and I'm not super crazy in love with it. So I have, I want to do things that, um, I want to spend my time on things that I'm really going to enjoy right now. And that Gulf Coast Native is just not the best quality wool ever. Um, it's also one of the rarest um, breeds on the list, so I'm probably being too harsh with it. But um, I also bought some CBM, and that's what I have sitting in front of me. First, I started with some gorgeous, gorgeous medium chocolate uh, wool. And I think this is Bucko. Um, and if I pan and show you this mess, you can see over there, I have some that still needs drying, but it was raining the other day and I had nowhere else to put it, so I brought it up here. Um, but yeah. So this, uh, I bought one pound um, of raw CVM fleece from Never Say Never Farm. And I loved the color and I loved the quality and the strength of it is really good, which was um, the problem I had with my first CVM fleece was that the strength it was actually really poor and I've never really talked about that and I haven't, I've kind of felt bad and not wanted to say anything, but at the same time I paid a lot of money for the fleece and um, I had issues like getting the lanolin out, but that was like 
um, I learned some tips from them. Since then, like using a cold water soak first has helped immensely um, and getting the water really hot too. Um, but, but the strength on that first CVM fleece that I purchased, it was at Rhinebeck last year, um, it's just really bad. It's bad. It has a weak, it has a break spot, a weak spot across most, almost the whole fleece. And if I pull on a lock, it just snaps. It was a lamb's wool, so it could be that it's just super duper fine. But it's just causing me a lot of, it caused me a lot of trouble and I just was like fed up. Um, so I thought I would like test out uh, some more CVM, give it another chance. Plus the wool that I had, I wasn't sure if I could use it for the um, concert, uh, shave them to save them project. So I bought this bag of, um, uh, this isn't all of it, a pound of, I probably have like two to three more to make of these out of the first pound. And then I have that, I have two more pounds over there drying that I just showed you. So I went back and bought two more pounds. But this was the first purchase was one pound of this color, which I think was bucko. And I ended up buying three pounds in total. And when I went back to buy more bucko, I also bought this color which has another B name. It's a really, really light, light tan. It's, it's a, in the brown family. It's a really, really light tan, and I separated the one pound that I got into four colors. So I've got the lightest, almost white, it's like cream, and then just a little bit of um, kind of very light tan, and then I had the most of this, um, the darker tan from that from that bag. So I drum carded these four over the three day weekend, these four plus these two. <laughs> and now I have a massive amount of wool to spend. Not that I didn't already have a massive amount of wool to spend. So I just thought I'd update you on that. It's CVM Rommel Dale. It's, um, well, the initially it was for the shave them, shave them to save them. Um, project but then I just fell in love with the softness and the beautifulness that is that CVM so again that's um never say never farms and I feel like she's in Michigan yeah Michigan um okay last thing I'm gonna share sort of is something I've been working on so this is the inside of it um a while back I said I had designed my first pattern and it was this right here. <laughs> this is the inside of it, so it's not it's not very attractive. Um, I, I sh maybe I should just show this, but um, I don't know. I, I think I'm gonna keep still keep it a secret for now. I'll give you a peek at like what the the top looked like. I don't so I didn't love the colors. This is um, Cordell. Cordale, uh, as, uh, that's how Carrie, my wool mitten. Hi, Carrie, if you're watching. That's how she says it. Um, so I didn't love the colors, even though I dyed them and it's, that's hand spun. Um, but I would love the idea of like creating this, um, it's going to be a winter themed hat and I wanted to kind of redesign it. And this hat's a little bit big. The original one is a little big and I didn't love the colors. So I purchased some inexpensive, um, I'll just tell you it's Lopi, um, let Lopi. Um, I purchased some inexpensive yarn. So I think they're about five bucks a piece and I bought three different colors and I started designing, um, I'll, I'll roll it so I can show it like this. I started designing a hat pattern that I may or may not publish one day. Um, yeah, I think I like this design a lot better so far. I love the top of the original hat um, and I'm keeping that for sure, but it was like the lower part. I didn't love all of it, so I'm changing up a couple little things. And um, I think this would be a good first step into designing and writing patterns. Um, 
I, I'm not really interested in like a second income or anything like that. Um, I just, I like pushing myself and learning new things. And I feel like I'm really moving towards um, wanting to design and not knit things the way they were written so much. Um, that's kind of the way like I cook too, is that, you know, I don't, I almost never like follow the recipe. I always put my own spin on it and just like make up things as I go. <laughs> and so it's not surprising that I'm doing that with patterns now when I, even if I buy a pattern, I might change the color work on the yoke like I did for my Damyaka, Damyaka Lopa, um, that I still, I have to finish the sleeves. I am on Sleeve Island really bad with that sweater cardigan. So, um, all right, that's it. This is a little after school short video and maybe I can try and do this kind of format more frequently so you're not waiting four or five months or until I get my next school break in order to be able to do one of these. So um, maybe I can do like shorter, quicker ones where I don't do fancy editing because that is that takes that's probably the most time consuming is the editing. So uh, I'm gonna get off here and maybe do some homework or maybe just veg out and watch some TV. <laughs> <laughs> binge watch some Netflix oh um I wanted to share a couple like entertainment things so I have never watched Game of Thrones and I've never read the books until recently I downloaded the first audiobook and I really enjoyed it um and so I am now on book two I started it before school um started back and now I'm on book two and um, I used to listen to audiobooks on the way to work, but now I don't have that super long drive anymore, so um, I'm not really doing that. But I do sometimes like listen to it as like a bed story, a bedtime story. Um, although Game of Thrones is a little, <laughs> it's an adult book. This is not for children. Um, and then prior to doing that, I reread listen to um, the Garth Nix series, um, Ab Horson. And I wanted to mention that because it has to do with something um, exciting that's um, going to happen soon. So um, I've been thinking about um, one of the books in that series and one of the characters in that series in particular and how it relates to something that that's exciting that's going to be coming my way soon. So um, no guessing if you could figure it out. Those of you who like, maybe you might pick up on it. I don't know. I hope I don't. I'm gonna try and keep it a surprise. I have been amazingly like so good about keeping this a surprise or secret. Oh, last thing, and I have no time for this anymore. But like when I was just had like bunches of time over the summer to goof off um, and do whatever I want, I liked. I ran across YouTube recommended that I watch this, uh, these two guys, um, uh, their channel is called Lost in Vegas, Lost in Vegas, and they do reaction music videos, and I spent way too much time watching them react to, like, old songs that I love, songs that I grew up with, whether it's, like, classic rock, or 90s country, or some older country, I don't really listen to old, old country, or my what I perceive as older country. Sorry. Um, uh, yeah. So I particularly love like their reactions to like the classic rock and, oh, they did one of my favorite songs. Like one of my favorite, favorite, favorite songs is soul shine by, um, Allman brothers band by the Allman brothers band. And they did a reaction to that. And I loved that one too. So, yep. All right. That's it. Bye, guys. See you next time. Hey, guys. I wanted to show you this fiber from Never Say Never Farms. This is some CVM. Um, she also has CVM Merino crosses um, and maybe um, pure Merino as well. But um, I purchased some uh, rare breed CVM. Um, originally, I purchased this, what's in this bag. 
um, this really lovely dark morant, or kind of medium actually, really beautiful medium chocolatey morant color. Um, and I loved it so much that I bought some more. So this is all washed um, and clean. Um, this is a bag that I just opened and then here's two more that um, I just bought so I really loved um, the softness and it has great strength and it is amazingly clean so um, I bought enough to make maybe a sweater um, she sells it by the pound so I didn't have to buy an entire fleece. I just bought, this was one pound, and then I purchased two more pounds later. And I really wanted a different color, too. I just had to, um, the three of these together will make something, but I wanted um, a lighter color. And based on the photo, I actually thought all of it was going to be this color. Um, so when I opened this, I was surprised to see this um, really light brown, but I'm not, um, upset by it because, <laughs> well, I mean, you guys know I love color work, so, um, <laughs> this means I'm probably going to meticulously separate these colors, um, and do a little bit of color work with this, and maybe combine, like, this would look really lovely faded into this, wouldn't it? Go from this light to this little bit darker, fade into that. That might be fun. Who knows? But this is really lovely, very clean. Um, I recommend it. It's got my stamp of approval. And my first CVM fleece, I have some really um, mixed feelings. Excuse my allergies. I have some really mixed feelings about. And um, to be honest, I'm not that happy with it. And it's kind of in time out. And, um, but this especially like washing this. It looks really short. It shrank up like so much when I washed and dried it. It shrank. It looks like that now. When before it looked like this and then it washed and dried to that. But it's really soft. It's really strong and it's incredibly clean. So um, I just want to show you guys that and tell you that if you're interested in some CVM um, or the Shave em to Save em initiative and you're looking for some CVM Rommeldale, this um, store on Etsy is a really great place to go. And it's sorted. <laughs> here's the lighter bin and here's the darker bin. And it's obvious enough, I think, that you can kind of see that. This bin has um, almost white or white. Uh, we'll see how it washes up. And then just slightly, a little bit of brown. And then in this one, it's mostly um, kind of medium to the darkest brown that came in this bag. So, going to wash these today. Quick little comparison. I want to show uh, what the staple length looks like because I'm sitting here thinking, wow, this fleece from a different, it's a different sheep than this brown. This is a bucko, I think, bucko. And then this is another B, I think. Think. I have to look it up. I don't remember, but they're both males. Funny. <laughs> I read in the um, sidetrack. I read in um, one of my fleece books that uh, if you if you if you buy a fleece, it's probably most likely a female. But actually, the majority of the fleeces I purchased are from rams. So that's funny. Um, so the staple length. I thought that this was looking a lot longer. Um, then I remembered this brown looking, but it's really only a teeny bit longer. Um, and I just wanted to kind of point out, cause look, that looks the same. Um, but I wanted to point out that that is how much it has shrunk. So this is, you know, from the same sheep, from the same, uh, same fleece. <laughs> look how much it shrunk. Oh my all right, that's all I wanted to show you. <laughs> Crazy, huh? So here's the plan today. This is 
Rommeldale, CVM. Um, I am going to drum card this today. I sorted it into these three colors. So, um, almost white, kind of cream, this very light, fawny, tan color, and this darker tan. So these are the three. I'm going to do three separate drum, uh, well, bats. And then I'm also going to try and get to the dark, um, let me grab it, this dark Morit that looks really shrunken up, but as I showed earlier, it just really shrank up. So I don't know why. Maybe this one was in, I had it out in super hot sun. And then yesterday when this was finishing drying, it dried over like two days. The sun wasn't quite as hot. I'm not sure why it didn't um, shrink as much as this color did, but it does stretch out to be about the same length. Interesting, I think. Um, so yeah, I'm going to drum card those, make a few bats. This is all from Never Say Never Farms. And I'll show you what those look like later.